you know, and, and so we have life uh, insurance that we're practiced on. So, you know, if, if we were to be, to do something shady, you know, we have insurance that you could have a reconciliation against and have recourse against. So, um, yeah, I think that would be some of my input there because no matter what, and no matter how much due diligence you have, we have access to incredibly sensitive information that can, it could definitely ruin your life. So definitely be very careful when you're hiring people and, and do the right due diligence. Uh, definitely. I'm going to be checking references. If you're working with someone that's licensed, it takes a lot of education, a lot of training and, and background to get there. And like this license, I've spent my entire life obtaining. And this is how I pay for my little girls dance lessons. You know, it's like I'm not robbing anyone like this is this is how I provide for it. So I think, you know, just doing your standard um, interviews and and really uh, just you know, and, and so we have life uh, insurance that we're practiced on. So, you know, if if we were to be to do something shady, you know, we have insurance that you could have a reconciliation against and have recourse against. So, um, yeah, I think that would be some of my input there, because no matter what and no matter how much due diligence you have, we have access to incredibly sensitive information that can it could definitely ruin your life. So definitely be very careful when you're hiring people and, and do the right due diligence. Uh, definitely. I'm going to be checking references, uh, but I should be asking them, Hey, do you have insurance? And can I see proof of your insurance? Yeah. I think that's a red flag. If you ask someone to protect you, I mean, an accountant and a bookkeeper, we're here to like be your team and make you feel comfortable and confident in what's happening. And if off the bat, they're like, well, you don't trust me and they get defensive uh, to me that's a that's a red flag but uh i would always be happy to do that and i think you know at times when you're hiring someone it always is awkward to ask about fees and i think it's important that you go into a relationship knowing exactly what fees to expect and that you can ask whatever those questions are and i don't think any um any accountant per, or any accounting professionals i know would be bothered by that um, that are reputable. So my, my, my preference for referrals or for working with new professionals is for them to be referred by somebody who's already using them. Uh, and if, if I am, then I'm going to have a conversation with at least one or two people that they're working with and say, Hey, tell me about Brian. Tell me about Cassie. How's it, how's that experience working with you? I want people who have known the, the professional for at least a year if I'm going to bring someone on as my bookkeeper or accountant, I'm going to do my due diligence. And, you know, as real estate investors, that should be something that we're all familiar with. Um, it's it's part of the, the job. Uh, and I don't just want to make, make sure that you're a great accountant. I want to make sure that you're a great accountant and that you have clients that look and operate like I do. I've had great accountants who knew nothing about real estate. And so in order to file my taxes, they had to learn, but they learned on my dime. And I don't want to pay for someone to understand subject to and seller financing and the rest of that stuff because it's, it's, it's expensive. I'd much rather find somebody who already knows that, who's dealing with that 10 times a day and whose clients are ahead of me. And so they can learn off of those clients and then bring that knowledge back to me because they've got clients that are doing things that I haven't done yet. So to me, having a strong base of, of real estate investor clients helps all of us because as we're doing different things, everybody's learning uh, how that works. Uh, so I'll ask the question, do you guys recommend that your clients, I hope you do, that you recommend that your clients look into accounting software that is cloud-based and not sitting on someone's computer that could be lost or stolen or what have you? I, I mean, this is coming from my own personal space. Uh, my husband is a software developer. I'm very much into technology, but my also my husband also says I'm a little bit of an old soul. So with that full disclosure, um, I honestly don't mind one way or another because there are resources in place where you can remote in. Even if it is like QuickBooks desktop, for example, you're able to remote in and 
still take care of what it is you need to do. Now, it's not quite as easy, but I mean, I, I don't mind. It doesn't bother us at all. Well, I, I've thought about offering discounts to people who use QuickBooks online because it, or just something in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> not in the contribute to Cassie. I, uh, um, but yeah, I definitely prefer the cloud versions because of the utility of being able to really connect and jump in and make journal entries and have different files. But Cassie's a hundred percent right. Some of those remote options for desktop is a good idea. And those are really backed up. And so if you are going to do a desktop version, don't have it on your local machine, get it in the cloud or somewhere where it's being backed up. But I'll give you a discount yeah. if you're on QuickBooks online. <laughs> uh, Sula, you have your hand raised. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, funny thing you guys talking about QuickBooks. Uh, it's very popular, but I've even seen that billion dollar companies using QuickBooks as their accounting softwares, which to me is kind of mind blowing. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, going back to one thing, my experience with cloud-based uh, accounting uh, platforms is that it can be easy to forget about them and just be very lazy, I guess. You know, like a perfect example is me. I am using one called Wave Accounting. Uh, it's very similar to uh, QuickBooks, but um, a, I have access to all my bank accounts, everything business, so it records it. And when comes comes time to tax season, I guess all I have to do basically go in and attach a receipt for every single one if it's needed or not but it's just like i guess one thing that's downfall is it's very easy to forget about it meaning that you won't be able to if you don't have a bookkeeping it's easy to just really forget about your account which is the same issue i'm having right now you know but thought i just i'm not sure if i'm the only one experiencing that or not that should be some that, that's a business decision right you, you you your business should be looking at your numbers at least monthly if not weekly uh and so it's easy to focus on deals because that's what we investors want to talk about. But at some point, you have to sit down and go, okay, how did this month go? What did I what did I earn? What did I spend? Uh, did I actually make any money? Is all my effort effective? And in order to do that, you need financials. You need to see your balance sheet. You need to see your profit and loss. And you can't get that without having done your financials for that month. So you shouldn't skip. You shouldn't forget about it because you should be looking at. You should be looking for those reports on a monthly basis. Every business that's successful in the world looks at their financials at least monthly. And so, and we're no exception. I know we're small business, but the way small business becomes big business is by watching the numbers and, and growing it based on the, the data. So while it's easy to do that, it's, it's, it's a calendar thing. You need to put it in your, in your system that once a month, at least you're going to be looking at your reports and you're going to be talking to your bookkeeper to review the, the month uh, worth of numbers. Because oftentimes there's going to be things you catch that will completely alter how you manage your next month, quarter, or even the rest of the year um, that you wouldn't have done before. Absolutely. Brian, you want to add to that? Oh, I was just going to respond. Rec uh, Rebecca had a good comment or question about QuickBooks saying that her accountant had said that QuickBooks is slow and the fear is that if it's slow um, and they're being billed hourly, um, you know, that's, that's not ideal. I don't find QuickBooks to be online, QuickBooks online to be slow at all. I think it's don't forget to click the notification bell. So you will get updated when the part two is uploaded. Hit like and subscribe for more topics like this in real estate skill set training channel. Thank you for watching.